Hey, Spencer, how are you? Hey, good. How are you, Dominic? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to have you back on here. It's yeah, been good a to be here. Month since we had our pre-call. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Uh, excited to have the conversation today. Yeah, I like your branding there. You, for those of you who are listening to this, I, I'm also recording it as a video. And uh, Spencer, very true to his word and understanding the marketing world, has got some nice builder funnel swag. Yeah, on. absolutely. Try to try to rep the T-shirt. You know, that's what it's all about. <laughs> So as you know, uh, the audience here, the community here is cabinet makers, architectural mill workers, furniture makers, and uh, all owners of those types of shops. And the reason that they listen to our podcast is to get business improvement information. One of the things that we haven't brought is a lot of marketing info. Because not only do we have people who do commercial tenant improvement type uh, mill work, but we also have people who do marketing at the retail level to homeowners or renovators. So there's a, a wide variety of types of listeners. And as I do my research and I meet people, I realize there's a lot of weakness in the website area. Absolutely. <laughs> which I think is your strength. Yeah, yeah, we spend a lot of time on the internet, on websites and uh, social media. So tell us a little bit about Builder Funnel and how you come to be speaking to us here. Yeah, for sure. I'll give, uh, I'll give a little bit of the, the history. So. Uh, my family comes from a long line of home builders, actually, out in the Seattle area. They've been, uh, my uncles run the business today, but they've been in business for, I think it's like 109 years uh, now. So uh, four generations, and my dad was in the business, and then we actually moved out to Colorado Springs from Seattle when uh, my dad purchased another business, a marketing business, direct mail business from uh, my other grandfather. So uh, that's how, how we ended up in Colorado Springs. And then in, I guess, 2009, 2010, I was starting to get into social media and was talking to my dad and he said, Hey, I'm, I'm trying to transform the company from direct mail and get into the digital space. So he said, why don't you just come over here and do what you're doing there and try to figure it out, you know, so I have some help in, in doing that. And so that was kind of our, our foray into the digital space. And we, we started working with the family business out in Seattle to, to redo their site and start doing some blogging and social and, and try to generate some leads. And that started to take off and we helped them kind of come out of the recession and they took, they had a home building business, but they had a remodeling division. And we took that from about two to 5 million over the course of a few years. Um, a lot of that was our efforts, but a lot of it was just them, what they were doing with other marketing as well. And, uh, we said, Hey, let's, let's stay in this space. Like we, we know it, we've got the family expertise and, yeah. and now we're starting to develop this digital expertise. And so, uh, it's been an eight year journey since then. And we've worked with, you know, construction companies all over the U S and some in Canada and, um, focus on digital and, and lead gen. So that's kind of the, the short version of the, the background. Of the of 109 year story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I come in very late into the 109 years. That's okay, you've got another 40, 50 to put on that. So that's uh, yeah. no pressure. As yeah, like. no pressure for sure. <laughs> but you know, I found you because of your podcast. So for those of you listening or watching who like podcasts, who like listening and learning as you're driving in the car and you don't, you know, you want to make the most of your time. Spencer, you have a podcast as well. What's the name of it? Just what, before we get into the, uh, our interview here. Yeah, for sure. So it's called Builder Funnel Radio and we started late last year. And, uh, you know, like you said, it's really just for people in the home building, construction, remodeling space, contractors to, uh, to learn. And we bring in different experts and, and talk about all kinds of different topics, uh, mainly in the sales and marketing world, but yeah, good chance to just listen on the go. Yeah, good. Well, I'm a big fan of the show, especially because you and I are recording next week for you. On yeah, your show. absolutely. I yeah, couldn't absolutely. speak more highly of it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, listen, let's get started into this. Um, I went and I've done a lot of research on you in, in the, the time between our pre-interview and now. And I went to your website and I looked at some of the services and the things that you offer. And I, I listened to some of your other podcasts. And that's why I got even a little bit more excited because I think you know, so much of what um, the cabinet making and the, and the architecture millwork community is based on is the visual, right? There's a, there's a lot of visual that goes along with that. And the, so websites become an important part of that because people want to see what you've built before, what you can build, and they want to get design ideas. And people get excited by that, especially those of us who cannot translate flat blueprints into a 3D picture in our mind. 
Yeah, I'm one of those people. So. <laughs> Good thing you're on the media side of the family business. Absolutely. So let's let's start with what I think is the big picture here, and I'm going to ask this question: If your website was a tool, do you think it would be a tool that generated leads or a tool that helped people buy from you? Which one of those tools would it be? You know, um, I don't know if I want to pick, but uh, you know, because I think it can it can do both, but it's definitely more of a lead generation tool. And, you know, when you think about the site and how people shop and buy today, they go online first, you know, and, and if it is, isn't first, it's definitely going to happen somewhere within the buying process. That's right. And so I would say, you know, it tends to lean towards lead conversion, but you can include a ton of information that, that does help people buy from you. But of course, in this industry, as we know, they're not going to, buy online you know they're gonna they're gonna buy from you they're gonna go through a sales process where you talk to them and figure out what they need and you're gonna you know solve their problem so uh, definitely you know you want to leverage it as kind of a 24 7 lead generation tool it's it's always online it's always working for you and and it can bring you some some nice qualified leads so how do we how would we capture those leads so we've got somebody coming to the website two in the morning or two in the afternoon we don't know what time yeah, they're probably dress differently if they're surfing at two in the morning. Yeah, probably so. Or at two in the afternoon, but uh, but what are we trying to do or provide to get that person into our funnel, our sales? Yeah, funnel? it's a really good question, and I think it starts with thinking about where they are and, and trying to meet them where they are. So the way people shop and buy has changed. You know, we go online, we browse, we bounce around a million sites, and so. Um, one of the reasons is because we like to kind of answer our own questions and figure things out. And so as a part of the research process, people start Googling all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, what kind of cabinets are available and should I do this size or that size and what do they cost and how long does it take to install and, you know, all of these kinds of questions. And so the first step is really trying to address those questions and answer those questions in the form of blog content, could be videos, mm. uh, website pages. Basically, those are just mediums of content. But the idea is that if we're tackling these questions, then as people type them into Google, then they can start to find our content. And now they're on our website. So that's kind of the first step is thinking about what are people looking for and how can I address their questions, answer, you know, answer those, address their problems, and get them to me. Yeah. So what's the difference you think from um, a company that says, yeah, we've got a website to a company who says a website's a really important part of our strategy. Cause that's what I hear in the field. People are like, yeah, yeah, we got a website. We need to update it. Pictures are 13 years old. Right. Yeah. And there's others who just focus a ton of energy on that site. What's the difference yeah. that you see between those two companies in terms of sales operations, profitability? Yeah, it's a good question. I think when you look at, you know, a site that's, that's not doing those things, not creating content, you know, not thinking about it as a lead generation tool. It's basically just an online brochure, you know, mm -hmm. so you can point people to it and you can say, Oh yeah, you can go see some of our product, our work, you know, our portfolio on the site, you can learn more about our company, but really that's fairly static uh, in terms of what people can, can do. They can consume a little bit of information, but, uh, with a lead generation site, it's actually, you're, you're using that to get people there for the first time. And that's really the biggest difference because if you've got a website and you're not leveraging it and creating content and driving people to it, it really just becomes kind of a, a checkpoint. Like, oh yeah, I, I went to their website so I could see some stuff, but there's no way they got to your website unless one, you told them how to get there or yeah. two, they actually know your brand name and then they can Google your brand name and of course they'll find you. We wanna get people to the site that don't know your company, they just know they need cabinets or you know whatever the, the end result Counter -tops is. Countertops or furniture or whatever it is, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know one of the challenges, and I deal with this as a business coach, is that at some point the company needs to transition because we all get older, right? I know I'm getting older because I need glasses <laughs> for everything now. Um, you're just this fuzzy thing with a blue shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, blinded uh, on my contacts, so I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's getting worse, right? 
But, but uh, one of the serious conversations that I have with business owners when the, the doors are closed in the boardroom and I'm in business coaching mode is what about transition, which is selling? Are we going to sell it to the sons, the daughters, the nieces, the nephews, mm-hmm. or are we going to sell it on the open market in a, you know, a, a, through the regular means? And the challenge for a construction company is that the multiples or the amount of money that you get for your company is based on the value of your company going forward. That's all I'm going to buy it for because I want to, I'm buying your company, but I want to buy that cash flow stream. And if all you do is contract to contract to contract, there's no long-term value in your construction name, but it's the same for an excavator. It's the same for an electrician. It's the same for an HVAC company. It's the same for concrete forms and finishing. Yeah. There's no, it's just the contract of the day, not long-term. So yeah, now it's all service, the right? market, and the people that have an online database like they've got a mailing list. They've been harvesting leads, 100 leads a year. They just got 100 names a year. That seems small in the first year. After five years, they've got 500 names. When somebody comes to buy a, a business, they're looking in the market for a business to buy as well. And they go, I can buy John's cabinet shop, who's contract to contract to contract, or I can buy Fred's con- uh, cabinet shop. He's also contract to contract to contract, but he's got a list of five or 600 names. Which business will I buy? Yeah, easy choice. You want the one where there's some marketing potential there and, yeah. and some contacts. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, I think and I'll a, pay more for that. Yeah, and that's an excellent point. And I mean, as you bring people to the site, you can capture them and they do go into the database. And that's where you can start to build a robust list of either one, customers, or two, uh, people that have gotten a lot of value out of the content, they're doing their research and they're thinking about it and they're a good prospect. Uh, maybe not today, but six months from now, 12 months from now when they're actually ready to move on whatever it is that they're going to move on. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, especially in the, the residential market is that after my cabinets get done and my friends come over to my house, I want to be able to point them to the website and say, you got to go see these guys. The people that did our kitchen and bathroom, this is their website. And then you want that to be a great website experience for somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. And if the, the work, that's one of the things that I see missing out there a lot. You mentioned, oh, I've got a website and it's 13 years old and we haven't updated the photos. Those photos are out of date, you know? So even if somebody does make it to your site, you want that to be reflecting your current work and the quality of work you do. So get professional photography done, you know, and display those new projects, get them up in a timely fashion because that's what people are looking for. You know what people are saying right now as they're listening? That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I, you, now you want me to go take pictures and then upload it to the website? How do I? Too much work. Too much work? Yeah. How do we, how do we overcome that? Because the value is there. And our job, you and me, our job is, to, if we believe in this, our job is to show people how to make it easier or find a way to do it. So if people listening right now, and I know, I know you're out there, we know, we know what you're saying as you're driving or you're on the treadmill or walking your dog. This sounds great, but it's a lot of work. I'm already busy running the shop. How can you now ask me to run the website? Let's give them a solution here. What do they do if they're hearing this and they like it, but they're thinking it's too much work? Yeah, well, I guess the first thing I would say is uh, just trying to take a step back and go and just look at the situation and say, hey, you know, maybe it is a lot of work, but is it worth it? You know, is it worth representing my brand in today's age? Is it worth it for that extra job that I'm going to get when somebody visits the site and they actually go, wow, this is amazing work. I do want to work with a company like this. I think that can help at least be a little bit motivating to get, get things moving forward. And then for me, it's all about systems. So, okay, what do we need to do to actually make this happen? One, we need professional photography. So find a local photographer, Find, you know, if if that's too expensive and you can't find somebody that's kind of going to be available regularly, find a photography intern at a local college, you know, and and that'll be great practice for them. And it's probably going to be better than the photos you're taking with your phone. You know, so at least you've made that step up. Uh, But just make it a part of your process. So, uh, hey, we finished a job. We take professional photos and it's just a part of every job. And then, um, you can decide which ones you actually want to feature. Maybe you, you do a project and you're going, eh, this isn't the quality of work that I want reflected, but you've still got the photos because it's just part of the system. And then the next, you really just have a second step, which is you either need somebody in house or a web person, web developer, web guy that can upload new photos. And so 
the photographer takes the photos and you can just say, hey, send it to this person, take you out of the middle and, and it's done. And so I think it feels overwhelming, but, but really in my mind, that's like two steps, you know, and maybe a review step for you, but it's, yeah. it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be that hard. And then there's lots of contractors out there who can take care of the website for you. Totally. Right. And I, one of the challenges that we see on, especially on um, cabinetry and furniture websites is when you take a high quality photo, it's a big file size. Yeah. And so uh, I won't even finish the sentence. Once you, what happens once we have a big file size picture? Yeah. I mean the, the load speed of your website just, uh, it goes way, you know, way, way up. And sometimes it doesn't sit properly on the website. And so, yeah, it's important that the file and the image is large so that it displays well on the site, but you want it just large enough and no larger so that Google doesn't have to load the whole file and compress it. Um, and it, and it actually displays how you want it to display. Right. Yeah. So that's an important point for those of you listening. When you up, when you're uploading your images, you want somebody who knows what they're doing so that the file size isn't so big that it slows down your website because, and we're all the same when a website loads slowly, we just go up to the top left, that little red mark or that X on the tab and we just close it. Yeah. And now you've lost all that work that you've put into it from bringing in that person. Totally. And just a fun fact to add to that too, page speed or load speed is a ranking factor. So it can actually uh, decrease your ability to, to rank in Google if your page loads really slow. Yeah. So, double whammy. <laughs> well, are there, so are there tools out there that anybody can use to, um, to do an assessment on their website, page load speed, uh, broken yeah. link checkers? Yeah, absolutely. And um, honestly, the, the one that we use is just a Google um, page speed tester. And if you go to Google and type in Google page speed test, uh, happy to provide you with the link after for the show notes. And, mm. uh, but you'll find it. you can put in your website and it will give you a grade and then it will tell you, Hey, these are the areas that are bringing you down or slowing down your, your website. And so you can, uh, if you don't know about all the technical details, you can send that to a web developer and, and have them work on those issues. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll one, help you rank better in Google. And two, once people get there, like you said, hopefully they'll stay there and they're not waiting for it to grind and then they just close. And then they just close it out. Yeah. yeah. How, how important is a website going forward in the future here in our industry? Do, do we need websites in, in the future? It's a silly question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's critical. Honestly, the way we look at websites is they're the center of all of your other marketing efforts and they're kind of the core. So let's say you're doing direct mail. People are going to get that. They're going to Google you. They're going to go to your site. You know, if they're on social media and they learn about you or see a post or a friend mentions you, they're going to go to the website, you know, and that's just, that's home base for your marketing. And so you've got to have it. And, you know, we've talked about the importance of getting people there, but then I, I think the next part is really, what happens when they get there. And that's really where the lead generation part comes in. And so the way I like to think about it is when somebody gets to your website, we don't necessarily know where they were in the process, right? So maybe they talk to a friend and they're saying, hey, I, I need to get this project done. And so do you know anybody? And they say, great, I worked with this company, go to their site. They're probably at the buying stage. They're ready to talk to you. But then you get other people that are saying, hey, I wanna redo my kitchen or, you know, get new cabinets done or redo my bathroom or what, you know, whatever it may be. I wonder what that process looks like or how do I go about that? And then they just start Googling stuff or maybe they're on Facebook and they see some design ideas. And so they start mm -hmm. looking around. Once they get to the site, we don't actually know where they are in that process. And so we want to have opportunities to convert those people at every stage of the funnel. And so as marketers, we like to talk about funnels, uh, I'll kind of keep it at a basic level. I like to talk about there's top of the funnel, mm -hmm. which is, hey, we're, we're researching. I'm not ready to talk to somebody today. I do want to redo my kitchen, um, but it's maybe six months out or nine months out. But they have lots of questions. So a good conversion point for that person might be a kitchen design guide or kitchen trends for 2018 or what, you know, whatever the current mm -hmm. year is and somebody can fill out a form to download that guide. So now you've actually captured a name and email, you captured a lead, um, and now they can go into your database. We right. started talking about that earlier, but that's a way you can stay in touch with that person until they are ready. And then you've got kind of the bottom of the funnel, which is 
hey, I'm ready to talk to somebody about my project, schedule a consultation, request a quote, whatever you want to call it, but that's kind of your, your bottom step. Perfect. So you like the, the, these are called calls to action or CTA in the industry. So you like having the free report download as some sort of freebie item there for somebody to download and we can then tell where they are in the process, but we're also starting that relationship with them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's, I think one of the most overlooked pieces is, okay, once I've captured this person, they filled out a form, they downloaded a guide. We think, oh, well, they're not, they're not a good lead. They just downloaded this guide and they don't really want to buy. But why were they on your site? You know, they went to the site for a reason. They, they actually gave you some information. Some people put in bogus information. Great. They, they're qualifying themselves out. They're not, not a good lead right now. Um, but if they put in legitimate information and they were on your website, there's enough indicators that say, hey, there's something here. We just need to figure out what it is. And that's where email becomes a super powerful tool. You yeah. can send them a newsletter, you can send them new projects. If you win an award, you know, you can just continue to be there and add value. And then four months later, they're like, man, these guys are always giving me they're great all stuff. All over the place. And yeah. I think I'll talk to them. Yeah. So, you know, there are, I don't know the number, there's a billion websites out there in the world. Let's just say that. Sure. So if somebody, let's just say million, let's just say, use a low number and say there are a million websites out there in the world. So if somebody comes to your website, they are one in a million coming to yeah. your website. And then if they download something from your website, that's an even smaller factor. So to your point there, they've given you some indication that they have some level of interest. People don't just browse cabinetry or custom furniture or architecture millwork for no reason. Right. They're, they're there to do something. Somewhere in their mind, that's gone off, right? And so they're, they have some level of interest. So I agree with you. We need to find a way to harvest those people, you know, Business hasn't changed. The internet and social media hasn't changed anything. It's just amplified the, the factors of know, like, and trust, right? We, we all do business with people that we know, people that we like, and people that we trust. So if I come to your website and I download this, what did you call it, the kitchen design guide? Yeah. If I'm at the top of the funnel, I'm just getting to know you. Right. And I like your kitchen design guide, I like you. And when I think about who I trust, I'll say, well, you know, the leaders in this industry in my town or in, in my quarter of the section are, is uh, ABC cabinets. You know, they put out the design guide. They said they just did a home reno in our neighborhood. They sent me pictures. I know that's house. That's next door to Julie and blah, 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 blah. We've got the no like and trust stacked up. Whoever comes in to sell against us is really low down on the priority list. And we are that much. We're in a much better position to win that deal. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other cool part about it is if you don't give people that opportunity to convert on, say, a kitchen design guide and they come and just browse around because they're not ready for that bottom step, then they leave. So then four months later, when they are ready, either somebody else is already in play and you're not, or yeah. now you're kind of back to square one and you hope that you're in the mix somehow and they find you again. So it's like the fact that they found you, we don't want them to go before we find out who they are. Yeah, we need to do something there. So how does somebody get started? We've got um, all sorts of listeners here, people who I, I, would, I would assume everybody's got a website that's on that's listening to this because they're the owners of, of millwork companies. They're generally their revenues are in the, in, the, in the low millions to multiples of millions and they've got a staff going. So these are all going concerns. What's a quick win that we can give people regardless of what they've got going on on their websites? Give us some maybe one, two or three points that we can add value to the world in and telling them, hey, go fix these things or look at these things? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think I'm, I'm going to jump back to the point of developing that top of the funnel offer. So I'll just, we'll call it a guide, you know, and you can, you can put a name to it that makes the most sense for your company. Um, and really, let's break down the components just so people know, okay, well, I get that I need this guide, but how does it actually work? So it doesn't have to be a 40 page ebook or, you know, anything like that. Uh, a lot of the guides we create are, you know, five to seven pages, mostly imagery with some nice text supporting that. And you're talking about a certain topic. So it could be process. It could be cost ranges. I know people are sometimes afraid to talk about cost. That's what everybody wants to know. You have about. to, yeah. you have so, to. So don't dodge it. You'll probably be the only one talking about cost and that sets you apart. So let's just say you create a cost guide. And so you've got a few pages, 
You can create it in a Word doc. You can create it if you've got a designer. I definitely recommend going that route. Um, save it as a PDF. It doesn't have to be super advanced. Then you really just need a couple of other components. You need a call to action, which you talked about earlier. And that's basically just a little web graphic. And it says, click here to download our guide. And somebody clicks on that, it's gonna take them to a page on your website. We call it a landing page. And that basically gives them a little summary of what they're gonna get if they fill out this form. You know, hey, download our guide. You're gonna learn about how much it costs and how right. long it takes and blah, blah, blah. Fill out a form and then boom, they get instant access to the download. If you take that process, you put, put that together and then you take that call to action, so that web graphic, and you put it throughout your website, so not just on your homepage, not just on one page, but on every page of your website, now, no matter where somebody is on your website, they have an opportunity to see that and click on it. And by doing some things like this, you can actually see your conversion rate on your website go from about a half a percent, which is where almost every website I look at, you know, to start when I analyze it, they're at about a half a percent conversion rate, which means if you get 200 visitors a month, you'll get one lead or one form submission. Right. So we can drive that up to 1% we aim for about 1.5 to 2.5%. Um, you can do that by making your offers more relevant to the content on the page. As an example, if somebody's on a, uh, a kitchen remodeling page versus a bathroom remodeling page, if you have a bathroom ebook on the bathroom page, like you're super congruent there, yeah. versus a kitchen one on the bathroom page. So the countertop one on the countertop page, et cetera, right? Cabinet one on the cabinet, yeah, exactly. So the more relevant the offer to the content on the page, the higher the conversion rate in general. Um, but if you just start with an overview, something that, that is kind of broad and will cover most of your content that you have and most of your pages, you should be able to see a jump from about a half a percent to 1%. And hey, without even growing your traffic, you've doubled your leads from your website. The, um, let me ask you this, because it's just gonna come right down to the money. Sure. I opened with the question, is a website a lead generation thing or a conversion rate thing? So now, and you, you did a nice job of explaining what conversion rate is. That is out of X number of people that come to us, how many people take an action? That's all conversion rate is. Sure. So which of the two is more expensive, lead generation or conversion rate? Just doesn't matter what the number is. Which one is more expensive for a company to do, generate leads or convert people? I would say... I would say the first one because I'm kind of associating lead generation with driving traffic to the That's site true. and um, and we just talked through a simple way to improve your conversion rate. So um, you can only do that so far and then at some point you need more people coming to the site. Yeah. And that, that's the hard part. Yeah. But the, you know, in business coaching, we talk about it as um, in the category of easy wins early. That's one yeah. of our jobs as a business coach is to find easy wins early. And one of the easiest wins when we're looking at increasing sales is to change the conversion rate, not the number of leads coming in. Because if as a company, you've got a broken system for taking inbound leads, let's say, let's, let's just say you go to the home show in your local net area, right? You get all the little slips, everybody walks around, they fill in the little cards and they, not only do they give them to you, they give them to maybe three or four other booths. So you've got that, you need know, that cost for going to the home show. If your system is broken for taking those leads and selling to them, it doesn't matter how many leads I pump in, you have a broken system. So it's just a waste of money. So if we focus on, on getting you better at converting the leads you've got coming in, you'll do better just by the natural math, by cleaning up your system. And it's the same on a website. Yeah, yeah, and that's a super good point too because if you don't fix that conversion rate piece and then you start focusing all your efforts on the top, sure, you're going to still squeeze more out the bottom just by sheer numbers, but it's going to be a lot more work to get that little bit of extra out. So and yeah, wasted money on the top of the funnel. It's just totally. falling out the side. It's all <laughs> sloppy and messy. Yeah. We call it a leaky funnel where you got all these holes <laughs> in it and it's just <laughs> a leaky yeah. funnel. This is not a medical podcast. I'm not sure where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, if somebody wants to find out more information, because you've given us a lot of info, I'm sure you've got some calls to action yourself. Do you? Yeah, we have just, just a couple. If you, if you go to our site, you'll, you'll see a bunch of them, but 
Um, yeah, there's a really good one that I think would be super helpful for a lot of people right now. It's one of our checklists that we just created. It's a um, Google AdWords versus Facebook advertising checklist. You, oh. If you've ever analyzed those two and trying to decide what, what a good fit is, um, happy to, to point people to that. And if they just want to email and ask questions, you know, I know this stuff is new to a lot of people. Just send a, a quick email to hello at builderfunnel.com. Um, we're very much an education-based company. So if you send questions, I'll make sure I, I address those and just reply back by email and, and get you some answers. Perfect. So it's hello at builderfunnel.com. You got it. And then you're Spencer. You're the, the owner of the company. You're the guy who makes sure that things get done that need to get done. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm the guy. So <laughs> no, I, I, I find that uh, my team is, is definitely a lot more effective and, uh, and they're the ones that, that are driving everything. But I just try to try to enable them and, and put them in a position to succeed. Yeah. So uh, but yeah, uh, happy to, to have people email in with questions and, and send them the checklist as well. Great. Well, Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoy your podcast at Builder Funnel Radio, and uh, I listen to it now when I'm driving. It's one of the podcasts oh, I have yeah, in, my, cool. in my circuit, and uh, I'm going to add you to my newsletter so that, you know, because I refer, I tell people which podcasts I'm listening to, so I'll, I'll have to add yours in there. Um, there's, cool. As I said, there's something going on in Colorado because there seems to be a lot of podcasts for the construction industry out of that state. Yeah, yeah, they're they're piling up. Well, I mean, as you know, Denver is kind of just on fire to begin with. So I feel like we're just getting an influx of, of people moving here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and thanks. It's been a real honor being on the show. I appreciate the, the invitation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for everything you've done for the cabinet maker and architectural millwork community. Hey, everybody, thank you for listening or thank you for watching. If you do want more information, uh, this will be uh, an audio. Uh, so as a podcast, you'll see this as a video on YouTube. We also do a transcript so you can download it and print it in case there's something Spencer said that you wanted to, to really dig into and see it um, uh, in written format. And then we'll also have links. I guess you're going to send me some links, Spencer, to the, uh, the checklist and things like that. Or if you can't wait for this episode to go live because we're recording it about three months in advance, then just contact Spencer directly and it's hello at builderfunnel.com. Perfect. Yeah. And thanks again. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great day, Spencer. We'll talk to you soon. All right. You too. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.